So focus in, focus in. Uh, it relates to us today. Can I say it's the heaviest topic ever? No, but it's needed. All right, it's needed. We're going to go through some history today. Uh, to, uh, today's topic is titled, The Congregation of Israel from Moses until now. All right, today's topic is titled, The Congregation of Israel from Moses until now. All right, now, I posed a question before, before we touch the topic. Who has the precept to show that by reading things, just, yeah, just give it to me. Brother Shimmy, well, I don't said it. Dang. Go ahead. Sheesh. Uh, Romans 15 and 4. Very good. Let's just start right there. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. The book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. Come on. For whatsoever things were written aforetime. All right, so whatever was written aforetime was written for what? Were written for our learning. Come on. That we, through patience. Through what? Through patience. Read. And comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Might have hope. So meaning what? We have to read the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, the history, because there's values and lessons that will give us a chance at making the kingdom. Understand that it said might. You might have a chance at the kingdom. Okay? Now, we're going to start at the book of Psalms, chapter 22, verse 22. All right? Today's topic is titled, The Congregation of Israel from Moses until now. From Moses until now. Psalms 22, 22. All right, get ready. We are going to read history, so you have to pay attention. All right? Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 22. Verse 22. Come on. I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the congregation. In the midst of the what? In the midst of the congregation. Come on. Well, I praise thee. Read. Yea, uh, ye that fear the Lord, praise him. And all ye the seed of Jacob. All ye who? The seed of Jacob. So when you hear congregation in the Bible, who's that referring to? Who? Israel is referring to Israel. So when he says the, in the midst of the congregation, he's not talking about anybody else. He's talking about the Israelites. All right. Give me the book of um, Exodus chapter 12. Exodus the 12th chapter. And verse 47. The book of Exodus chapter 12 verse 47. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee and will keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised. Is that verse 47 still? Excuse me. Verse 47. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. It says all the congregation of Israel. So there's a, those are your two precepts. Whenever we hear congregation, it's talking about Israel. Now, we're going to dive into the topic. Give me the book of Deuteronomy, the first chapter, and the first verse, all right? Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 1. Uh -huh. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel on this side, Jordan, in the wilderness, in the plain over against the Red Sea, between Paran and Tophel, and Laban, and Hazaroth, and Dizahab. All right, so these are the words that uh, the prophet Moses spake unto the, to the Israelites, or the congregation. Read. There are 11 days journey from Horeb by the way of Mount Seir unto Kadesh Barnea. Read. And it came to pass in the 40th year, in the 11th month, on the first day of the month, that Moses spake unto the children of Israel, according unto all that the Lord had given him and the commandment unto them. So did Moses speak his own words, brothers and sisters? Moses did not speak his own words. He spoke the commandments of the Lord. Read. After he had slain Sihon, the king of the Amorites, Read. which dwelt in Heshbon, and Og, the king of Bashan, which dwelt at Astaroth and Edri, on this side Jordan in the land of Moab, began Moses to declare this law, saying, The Lord our God spake unto us in Horeb, saying, Ye have dwelt long enough in this mount. Uh -huh. Turn you and take your journey. And go to the mount of the Amorites, and unto the places nigh, unt, nigh thereunto, in the plain, in the hills, and in the vale, and in the south, 
and by the seaside to the land of the Canaanites. All right, so the Most High gave the commandment to Moses to tell us to do what? Just want to make sure y'all paying attention. My brother right here, what does it say? What did it, what did you say? I just want to make sure everybody's following. Uh, he'll he'll get them ready to uh, go into the promised land. Right, he's getting them ready to go to, into the promised land. The promised land's ancient name was called what, brothers? What is it called? Canaan. Who dwelt in Canaan? Canaanites. Um, out of Noah's three sons, which lineage did they descend from? So they would be called what today? Or I said today, <laughs> Africans, right? So the land of Israel was where? In Africa. Right, exactly. I just want to make sure y'all understand. Read on. Verse 7. Turn you and take your journey and go to the Mount of the Amorites and unto all the places nigh thereunto, in the plain, in the hills, and in the vale, and in the south, by the seaside, to the land of the Canaanites, and unto Lebanon, unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Behold, I have set the land before you, Go in and possess the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give unto them and to their seed after them. Come on. And I spake unto you at that time, saying, I am not able to bear you myself alone. So Moses is saying, hey, whew, it's too many niggas. It's too many niggas out here for me to handle this alone. I got the sisters over here murmuring against leadership. I got the brothers over here trying to overthrow me. You know what? Bro, this is too much for myself. Way too much. Read on. Verse 10. Come on. The Lord your God hath multiplied you, and behold, ye are this day as the stars of the heaven for a multitude. Read. The Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times so many more as ye are, and bless you as he hath promised you. Come on. How can I myself alone bear your Oh. Cumbrance. Thank you. It's verse 12. How can I myself alone bear your cumbrance and your burden and your strife? And your burden and your strife. So he's saying what? It got to the point where Israel got so big, he could not handle it by himself. Read on. Verse 13. Take you wise men and understanding and known among your tribes, and I will make them rulers over you. He will make them what? Rulers over you. All right. So this was by Moses or was this a commandment of God? This was of the most high. So let me ask y'all today. <laughs> let me just try this out. So the leadership that's established today is that of men or the most high? All right. All praises. At least we got it established. We got that established. From there, give me the book of Psalms, chapter 103, verse 7. The book of Psalms, chapter 103, verse 7. Read. He made known his ways unto Moses. God did what? He made known his ways unto Moses. Read. His acts unto the children of Israel. And some of his acts were putting thousands to death. So, when it comes to God's leaders, when it comes to his chosen or his anointed, we are going to find out how we should treat them. All right? We're going to find out how we should govern ourselves. Because you have to understand, the Bible says in the book of uh, 1 Peter, it says, honor all men. Meaning what? I have people over me. These people have people over them. So we have to learn how to deal as the congregation of Israel. All right? That's what we're going to learn in today's class from some examples of four time. From there, give me Psalms 99 and verse 6. The book of Psalms, chapter 99, verse 6. Come on. Moses and Aaron among his priests, and Samuel among them that call upon his name. They called upon the Lord, and he answered them. Who can tell me what that just said? Brother Yeshaya. It said, uh, Moses, Aaron, and Samuel among the priests called upon the Lord, and he answered them. See, that's good. Because... That's, that's all it said. That's what, exactly what it said. It's saying that what? His leaders, when they sought God, he actually listened. You have to understand that thing. For example, the Most High God set these men up. He chose them out of everybody else. And when they actually called upon him, he listened to them or he answered them or he guided these men. From there, give me Psalms 105 and 26. 
It's the book of Psalms, chapter 105, and verse 26. Psalms, chapter 105, verse 26. Come on. He sent Moses, his servant. His what? His servant. Read on. And Aaron, whom he had chosen. Whom he had chosen. The reason why we go into these precepts is just to show you what? Through, without a shadow of a doubt, these men were set up by who? By the Most High God, without a shadow of a doubt. All right, from there, let's go to the book of Acts chapter 7. But remember when I made the comment, but there is a Negro? We're going to read about some Negroes right now. Acts chapter 7, verse 35, okay? This class is for all of us. This is for the congregation of Israel because we're doing nothing but reading our history. All right, read what you got. The book of Acts chapter 7, verse 35. Come on. This Moses, whom they refused. Whom they what? They refused. Didn't we just read that God set Moses up? Yes, sir. But the congregation of Israel did what? They refused who God set up. Read it again. This Moses, whom they refused. Come on. Saying, who made thee a ruler and a judge? Who is this nigga? <laughs> you understand? Who is he? Why is he so great? Who says that he should be ruler over us? I could do the same thing. No, you can't. You know why? Because God did not choose you to do it. Everybody in here has a part. Am I the leader of IUIC? No. But am I the leader of IUIC Tallahassee? Yes. Because that's what God chose me to do. You have to understand, everybody, men and women alike, we all have our part. We all have our part. We can have our part in establishing the kingdom of heaven. Or we can also have our part with what? Being destroyed. And we're going to read about who made the right decisions and who decided to go with the crowd. Okay? Read that verse again. The book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 35. Read. This Moses, whom they refused, saying, who made thee a ruler and a judge? Come on. The same did God send to be a ruler. Wait, 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 wait. Read that part again. The same did God send to be a ruler and... Did, did, wait, wait, you too fast, too fast. Why don't you read that part one more time? The same did God send to be a ruler. God sent Moses here on earth to rule the congregation of Israel. That's right. Read on. The same did God send to be a ruler and deliverer. By the hand of the angel, which appeared to him in the bush. Read on. He brought them out. After that, he had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt. Come on. And in the Red Sea. Read. And in the wilderness 40 years. This is that Moses, which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall ye hear. Who knows what that's talking about right there? Uh, Brother Samuel. All right. Who knows what that's talking about? It just said, this is that Moses who said, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren. Who's that talking about? Moses was talking about the return of, well, talking about Christ. He was talking about Christ. Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter and 18th verse. Now, we're not going there. I have another question for you. How did Moses know that? It says it in Genesis chapter 49. Well, Moses wrote Genesis. Right. Well, the Most High God uh, gave him a vision, I, I guess. Right. He talked to Moses. He talked to him like we're talking right now. You understand? Because why? Because God chose him. Nobody else knew that. Nobody else knew what Moses was talking about. That's why, um, give me this. Give me the book of John 1 and 45. Watch this. You can sit down, brother. John chapter 1 verse 45. So at that time, they didn't know, they didn't know exactly what Moses was saying. Watch this, John 1, 45. The book of John, chapter 1, verse 45. Come on. Philip findeth Nathanael, and saith unto him, We have found him, of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. They didn't know until when? Until he manifested himself to Israel. That's when they found out who Moses was speaking of. But before that, they didn't know. Only Moses knew. Because you have to remember, Moses saw the beginning, the end, and the midst of times. He saw his death. 
He saw Babylon today. He saw it all. Because what? God chose him to see it. Okay? Let's go back to Acts, the seventh chapter. And uh, pick up where you left off. Acts, chapter 7, verse 37. Come on. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me, him shall ye hear. Him shall ye what? Him shall ye hear. Read. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake unto him. Excuse me. With the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai and with our fathers who received the lively oracles. So our forefathers in the wilderness received the oracles of God. Watch this. To give unto us. Read. To whom our fathers would not obey. To whom our what? Our fathers would not obey. To whom our fathers would not obey. Even though he was chosen of God. Now, today's topic is titled, The Congregation of Israel from Moses until now. The Congregation of Israel from Moses until now. What you'll learn is that nothing has changed. Nothing has changed, not, not even a little bit, all right? From there, let's go back to Deuteronomy. Let's pick up at verse 13. Deuteronomy, the first chapter, and the 13th verse, all right? Deuteronomy 1 and verse 13. Make sure you take notes, and when you hear these scriptures come out, make sure you examine your own self. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 13. Come on. Take you wise men and understanding and known among your tribes. It said what? And known. Excuse me. And known among your tribes. Let, let's, let's go, Jediah. Read on. And I will make them rulers over you. So Moses said that he would make these men's ruler over you, right? So ultimately, who is making these men's rulers? The Most High, because the Most High is dealing with who? Right. Exactly. Read on. And he answered me and said, the things which thou hast spoken is good for us to do. Come on. So I took the chief of your tribes, wise men, and known, and made them heads over you. Come on. Captains over thousands. Read. And captains over hundreds. Come on. And captains over fifties. Read. And captains over tens, and officers among your tribes. So, a lot of people speak slanderous words against Israel United in Christ and say, that's not in the Bible. All of these titles, you're giving yourself titles. Brothers, didn't we just read Captains of a Thousand? Don't we have Captain Yashua? He's Captain of a Thousand. It says Captains of a Hundred. You got Captain Kabaj, Captains of Car. All these different captains. Captains over 50s, we got officers of 50s. It says Captains over 10s, we got officers of 10s. So what you realize is that what? People are going to say what they're going to say because the same spirits are here on the earth. We're going to read later on in the lesson, you had those same spirits speaking evil against Moses. The same way those wicked spirits are speaking against us today. All right? Let's read on. Verse 16. And I charged your judges at that time, saying, Hear the causes between your brethren, and judge righteously between every man and his brother, and the stranger that is with him. Read. Ye shall not respect persons in judgment. Come on. But ye shall hear the small as well as the great. Ye shall not be afraid of the face of man. For the judgment is God's. And the cause that is too hard for you, bring it unto me, and I will hear it. So verse 18, no, verse 17, heavy. There's so many nuggets in there, a lot of it just went over your head. Keep in mind, I'll, I'll try to handle a few of them. Moses is giving the reign or the power to who? I'll answer, it's, it's his men under him. He's saying, hey, you judge the matters. So if the men under him are judging the matters, did he know about everything? No. So fast forward, we had instances in just this congregation. People became to get, uh, began to get upset with me. They say, can I talk to you? I said, yeah, you can talk to me, of course. They start telling me the matter, I was like, um, I'm sorry, I had no idea. I didn't know that was going on. Well, I, I assumed you knew. I said, like, why would you assume that? Who has the precept for not assuming before we continue? I got to make sure you men are studying. 
Sirach chapter 3, verse 24. Come on. For many are deceived by their own vain opinion. Ten people. For many are deceived by their own vain opinion. So, brothers and sisters, participation time. If you sleep, wake up. Participation time. Who in here has been deceived by their own opinion before? Right. So read the scripture again. Sirach chapter 3 verse 24. Come on. For many are deceived by their own vain opinion. Read. And an evil suspicion. An evil what? An evil suspicion. You think an evil of your brother and sister. Read. Hath overthrown their judgment. Have what? overthrown their judgment because they let that wicked thought get into their spirit now their judgment against that brother or sister is wrong that's why bishop talks about all the time you cannot be emotional in this truth you cannot allow your emotions to get the best of you now i'm gonna give you another shot who has the law no don't let me ask you like that well no the book of the law it's all in the bible whole bible's book of the law i don't care you got to find it who has the law that says we should not think evil of our brothers. Zechariah chapter 8, verse 17. Zechariah chapter 8, verse 17. Watch it. The book of Zechariah chapter 8, verse 17. I want everybody to get it so they can read along. Very important. This is very important. This right here could just end countless murders against our people if we would apply these scriptures. That's why we are on you the way we are because you come through those doors and you bring the nonsense that you learn out in the world in here and we are not going to allow it. If you feel a certain way, how about you apply the scripture? Apply the law that says, read what you got, and let none of you imagine evil in your hearts against his neighbor that is a law that is a law and we read why you shouldn't do that in Sirach 3 and 24 because it's going to alter your judgment brothers and sisters it will alter your judgment okay now if you have an issue against a brother or sister what should you do let me hear from brother samuel Apply Matthew 18, 15. They, very good. Apply Matthew 18, 15. I see that we got some new spirits today, so we're going to go to it. Brothers and sisters that are new, if you want to endure in this walk, you have to learn how to apply Matthew 18 and 15. Otherwise, you will not last. Because guess what? Before you read that, Luke 17, 1. Luke 17 and 1. I didn't plan on going this way, but we have to do it. There's a lot of young spirits in here. The book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 1. Wait till they get it. It's never, you can never go over the basics enough. You can never go over the basics enough. Read that. Luke, chapter 17, verse 1. Come on. Then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible, but that offenses will come. Who can explain that verse? Brother Antellus. Pretty much just saying no matter what you think or what you do, people are going to offend you. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. So will there be a time where you think evil of somebody? Probably. It's going to happen because they may have talked to you a certain way or you may have perceived it as evil. So the scripture is telling us it's impossible to avoid being offended. It will happen. Now, if you are offended, you must apply this scripture right here, Matthew 18 and 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. So when I said keep it in, I was being sarcastic because the Bible clearly tells you what to do in that situation. So if you feel evil towards your brother, if you think he mistreated you, what should you do, brothers, by a show of hands? Um, let me hear this brother right here. Shalom. Shalom. You should go to him and confront him and let him know what he did wrong against you. Because he's your what? He's your brother. He's your brother. Uh, Proverbs 17 and 17. Proverbs 17 and 17. Because he's your brother. 
A lot of you come in here and look at each other as niggers in the streets. And it's, it's, it's damn disgusting. The hatred I hear sometimes is ridiculous amongst our people. Like the brother just said, you, you go to that brother to fix it because he's your brother. The white man is not your brother. But you know what? If they boss at work, cuss them out, they would probably take it. That's the bad thing. If your boss at work talked down to you, you would take it because guess what? You want to keep your job. Yes, a boss. Yes, yeah. a boss. But when it comes to your brother, you would rather raise all types of hell. Nigga. You would rather harp all of that hatred in you and miss the kingdom. We have to evaluate ourselves. What did I call? Proverbs all right, read that. 17. Proverbs 17, verse 17. Come a on. A friend loveth at all times. Read. And a brother is born for adversity. Hey, what? A brother is born for adversity. Now, brothers, I'm nobody. But understand this. When it comes to the application of God's laws, situational, it's I don't have to look on a piece of paper to go to those scriptures. Give me uh, Isaiah 8, 16. You can do the same. It's all about application. It's all about studying, taking this truth seriously. Because, men, in order to be a judge of the people, what must you be sound in? The laws of God. You got to know how to deal with each other. You got to be, okay, that's easy, brother. Apply this scripture. But what happens, the reason why you freeze up and nig out <laughs> is because you don't have those in your spirit. You understand? You got to have... This has to be in your spirit. Everything you do. For example, big booty woman brought past Matthew 5, 27. It's got to be in your spirit. It's got to resonate. You understand? That's the only way. That's the only way you have an inch of hope of making the kingdom of heaven. Just to show you how serious this walk really is. Uh, read what you got. Isaiah 8 and verse 16. Come on. Bind up the testimony. Do what? Bind up the testimony. Who can explain that? Uh, let me hear Losias. Give him the mic. Okay, never mind. You got it. Shalom, leadership. Shalom. Um, bind up the testimony means like get your, like collect the like the laws, like bring them together in your head. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Bind them up. Bind up everything. The testimonies, the great deliverances that the Most High God did for us. All right, come on. And seal the law. Do what? Seal the law. What is that talking about? Zephaniah. Make it second nature. Right, seal it. If you seal something, it's locked in there. Think about a Ziploc bag. Whatever you put in there, you, you Ziplocked it. It's sealed in that bag. No air is getting to it. No dangerous chemicals. No nothing. That's how you got to be with God's laws. Because guess what? When we leave here, we go back into the dangerous chemicals. We go back into the wiles of the devil. If we don't have God's law sealed, we're going to become contaminated. How, how do you seal it? How do you seal it? Brother raise his hand first over there on the, on the Hezekiah. How do you seal the law? Uh, Joshua 1 and 8. Which is? Uh, Just say it. Meditate uh, day and night. Day and night. Wait. Repetition. Study. Application. Uh, uh, Bishop says it all the time. Spa. Study, pray, apply. Right. All praise. Let's go back to, we was in Acts. Let's go back to Acts 7 chapter. The book of Acts chapter 7 verse 39. Come on. To whom our fathers would not obey, but thrust him from them, and in their hearts turned back again into Egypt. Did it say through their mouths? And in their hearts turned back again into Egypt. Brothers and sisters, I always like to have thought-provoking classes. Because guess what? You may never say anything evil out of your mouth. You may never, ever, it may never, ever come out. But if it's in your heart, <laughs> you still will not get the kingdom. Hey, Cap. Yes. That's, that's literally you playing church all over again. Because right. if, if, you, if, if you're reading this and you, it's not resonating with you, you're just doing what you did when you was in a Christian church. It's a yeah. lovely song. It's a lovely song. That's right. all. Read on. Verse 40. Saying unto Aaron... Make us gods to go before us. For as for this Moses, which brought us up, which brought us out of the land of Egypt, 
We want not what has become of him. They don't want nothing to do with what God established. And you like, I see the look on your face, but as you endure, you're going to see some crazy stuff. Hold on, wait a minute. So you mean to tell me you saw all the camp videos, you saw all the documentaries, you saw all the classroom videos, and you finally decided to come into the school. And then judgment comes forth on you. Uh, oh, he ain't going to talk to me like that. Whoa, wait a, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Isn't that why you came in the truth in the first place? Because you've been looking for that? Your soul has been longing for men of God who's actually going to do what the Bible says? And then when they do it, and they hold you accountable, you got a problem with it. Because you weren't supposed to do it to me. You're just <laughs> supposed to just do it. <laughs> hey, that's, hey, that's got to be it. That has to be what it is. It's like, nah, not me. That's it. Yeah, that's, that's it. That makes more sense, Judah. Thank you. I appreciate you. All right, from there, let's go back to um, Deuteronomy 1 and uh, 13. We're going to read. Oh, no, I'm sorry, 17. Excuse me. Deuteronomy 1 and 17. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 17. Ye shall not respect persons in judgment, but if ye shall hear the small matter, and as well as the great, ye shall not be afraid of the face of man. For the judgment is God's, and the cause that is too hard for you. Bring it unto me, and I will hear it. So, check this out. There's another nugget in there. Whose judgment did it say it was? So check this out. Let's just say one of the men under me, right? Let's say they bring forth wrong judgment. Whose judgment was that? Ah, see, now they don't want to answer. Now they're like, oh, no, that ain't of God. Uh-uh. Now, nah, wrong judgment on me, that's not of God. Uh-uh. Let me ask you again. If a brother, an officer, right, brings forth wrong judgment against you, who is that of? All right, who want to take a stab at explaining that? Who wants to break it down? Let me hear uh, Hezekiah. These brothers are like, nah, I don't agree with that. Hell no, I don't agree with that. The most I might be testing your spirit when he give you wrong judgment. <laughs> Bang. Boom. What are you going to do? Let's say all, point, all fingers are pointing at you. Hey, brother, you in the midst of sin, but you didn't do it. What are you going to do now? You gonna, yeah, are you going to run? Oh, I'm leaving IUIC. They passed wrong judgment on me. Or are you going to apply the scripture? Who knows what scripture to apply when wrong judgment is passed? It, it's a scripture. I'm not making it up. It is a scripture. <laughs> and you know why he put that in there? To cover every situation. If it's righteous judgment or if it's wrong judgment, it's still of God. Because think about it. If everything went right, would you be tried in the fire? No, <laughs> you're not. So sometimes things got to, they got to get rough for you sometimes to get the impurities out of you and to make you do the commandment or to show who you really are. Let's go to it. First Peter's chapter two and verse, start at, um, start at 17. This is definitely changed into a different class slightly. Sheesh. But that's all right. That's all right. The book of First Peter, chapter 2, verse 17. Come on. Honor all men. Do what? Honor all men. Read. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Do what? Fear God. Come on. Honor the king. Read. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear. Come on. Not only to the good and gentle. So it says, okay, you may have some officers that are pretty soft-spoken, pretty nice to you. Say, hey, bro, you can do it, bro. Don't worry. Or... Read on. But also to the forward. Or you may have an officer say, hey, bro, to be honest, you just weak as hell. Get over it. Read. For this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. Wait a minute. This is, wait, wait. That, wait, wait, read it again. Read that verse again. Verse 19. Come on. For this is thankworthy if a man for conscience Toward God. Toward who? Toward God. Is it the man over you or is it toward who? Toward God. So understand what you see before you, nah, uh-uh. It's of God. You have to understand that. Whatever goes forth is of God is for you to be refined. 
Because what you'll learn later on in class, certain spirits are in the congregation for you. That's what you got to understand. They're here literally just to take you out or to refine you into that fine gold. Two things, one or the other. And you'll understand, you can only be refined if you are in a congregation. That's the key. I'm, no, I'm telling you straight. You can only be refined if you're in a congregation. You can't apply God's laws being by yourself. That's right. You have something? You guys know why Captain says you can only be refined when you're in a congregation. Who knows? My brother right here raised his hand. Hey, peace. Shalom. Hey, shalom, brother. I don't really know the scripture. Per it's day, fine. But it's um, iron sharpens iron as brother sharpens the brother. Very good. Uh, yes. That's good. Very good. Let's read that. Very good point. He said iron sharpens iron. Meaning what? You got to be corrected. All of us have to answer to somebody. Ultimately, that's the most high God. But God, believe it or not, brothers, he does use men to do that, to carry it out. Okay? Uh, read the scripture. The book of Proverbs, chapter 27, verse 17. Come on. Iron sharpeneth iron. Read. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Turning that dull knife into something to be reckoned with. Understand that. Now, yes. The, the thing you got to understand is when you come to that point where you're being judged and that judgment is coming down on you, no matter how you want to react to it, always think of it as this is something that I need. Right. Prior to you coming into this truth, you did not have understanding of who you are. Right. You did not have understanding on how to be a godly man or a godly woman. You didn't have that understanding. So now that the correction on how to become that is coming from the scriptures, now you have to realize no matter how much it hurts, because the truth hurts, yeah. no matter how much it hurts, I need this medicine. That's the one way you'll be able to find yourself instead of running away from the problem, but being able to face it head on overcoming it and moving forward and growing from it. Unless, un, if not, you'll stay stagnant and eventually you'll move backwards out the door. Keep that, just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. The book of 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 19. Come on. For this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief suffering wrongfully so if the bible says it that means at some point in some time you're going to do what it's going to happen you're going to suffer wrongfully read for what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults ye shall take it patiently so it says if you actually get chastised for you committing sin what glory is that i mean you deserve it right read but if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. This is what? This is acceptable with God. That's acceptable with God. All right, brother. Hey, I've been getting jacked up. So you've been living uh, sinfully for the last 30 years, right? Yeah. Well, good job, brother. Welcome to the truth. You understand? But if you stand when everybody knows you're getting judged wrongfully and you stand up and say, don't worry about it. There's a God. That's, that's acceptable. And that's honorable in the sight of men and women. Because they know that, you know what? God's dealing with that brother or sister. Because they know, they don't, they don't care about what's physically happening, what they see. They got faith that the most high God has got all things under control. Read on. Verse 21. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, Leaving us an example. Leaving us a what? An example. Didn't they speak evil of Christ? You understand? But we get bent out of shape through one little correction. But it's actually, you actually deserve it. You understand? You actually deserve that correction. So not only can you suffer wrongfully, you can't even suffer for your sins. That's, that's Israel for you. And we're going to read about it in Numbers, the 16th chapter. Read on. 
leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. We should do what? Follow his steps. Read. Who did no sin. Read. Neither was guile found in his mouth. Even when people spoke evil of him, there was nothing evil that's coming back out of Christ's mouth. Even when he was lied upon, even when Judas betrayed him, there was no evil being spoke out of the Messiah's mouth. Read. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. Read. When he suffered, he threatened not. He did what? He threatened not. Brothers speak much evil against us when nothing even happened. <laughs> but he actually suffered. He was actually put to death, brothers and sisters, and he still said what? Forgive them. For they know not what they do. And people in here, in all of Israel, not just how you I see, they claiming they love God and Christ. Get out of here. The type of evil and slander that you see in the nation of Israel is crazy. It's crazy. You love Christ, but you hate your brother. You're not getting the kingdom. Let's drop that. You got something? Uh, I'm going to add to what Cap just said. Uh, first, first of all, sometimes when you do get correction, it may not be direct to uh, what you're being corrected upon. Mm. God allows certain things happen to you to fix something else you may have right. as an issue or to be an example for somebody else that was going to go off God want to get right. Let, let, let me get a scripture. Give me uh, Psalm 141 verse 5. Sometimes when you see you get correction, always take it cheerfully like the scriptures say in Sirach 2. Take it cheerfully because you don't know why. You got to start examining yourself, seeing where did I go wrong? What did I do that caused that correction? Start thinking deeper than the just uh, uh, one that's on the surface because God does things differently. Give, give me that. Psalms chapter 141 verse 5. Let the righteous smite me. It shall be a kindness, and let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil, which shall not break my head. For yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities. You see, when you think like that, you will never think a wrong judgment is fall upon you. Because you would think, maybe I didn't understand. Maybe I should pray and ask for more understanding on the matter. Because sometimes certain things I may correct you or any uh, um, uh, captain might correct you upon or Officer David may correct you upon, you may not see it. What you should seek instead, seek understanding, knowing that the, 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 uh, uh, let the righteous ju uh, 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 judge me for it might be for kindness unto me. Why is it going to be a kindness? Because they say you, were, uh, uh, you had a lustful spirit, for instance. And here you are now. Nobody correct you upon it. And you went and commit the act. Now you got uh, the big monster. Now you got, I, I mean, Is that what happen. they say in Haiti? It's called the big monster. Hey, I, <laughs> Damn. I don't want it, that. It, it is a big monster, man. Oh, it I'm is. telling you. It got that. you with that. It's no joke. But always, always seeing things when you get uh, 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 corrected, take it cheerfully. Don't, don't get mad over it. You'll get over it. You'll be all right. All praises. Yes. I, I don't. I know you want to keep it moving. You but know it. <laughs> <laughs> you know I do. <laughs> Real quick, uh, can I get Judges chapter five verse eleven? Yeah. Cause, cause in in all this is a heavy. I'm not sure if this is where you were trying to go with the class, but this is extremely heavy, especially just coming into this truth and your early stages of learning while you're in this truth. This is one of those classes where you really need to. Take every bit of it and apply it to your everyday life. That way when, when those problems or those situations come up, you'll be able to see it, see it for what it is. And then you'll be able to start examining yourself and be like, you know what? You know what? You're right. This, this, is, this is exactly what I'm all praises to the most high. He got me here. Because without this, I don't know what the hell I'd be or what I'd be doing. Read that real quick. The book of Judges, chapter 5, verse 11. They that are delivered from the noise of archers. Uh-huh, that's us. The noise of archers is the missiles, the nuclear missiles that are going to be hitting this place when it's destroyed. This ain't going to stand forever. Read on. 
and the places of drawing water. That drawing water is the slavery that we went through and still going through here in America and throughout wherever we're scattered throughout the world. Read on. There shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. Rehearsing the righteous acts. What's another word for rehearsal, brothers? What's another word for rehearsal? Uh, just throw it out there. Just throw it out. Pra what else? How about training? Remember, the Most High says in Psalms 82 that ye are gods. So this is the training to become gods. From boys to men to gods. So this is the training that you need. And in training, especially in like boxing and MMA, you're going to get punched in the face a few times. You're going to get kicked in the stomach. It's going to hurt. You're going to have to run the miles. You're going to have to really do some, some damage to your body. But at the end of it, you come out champions. You got to really look at it like that. Like this is, this is our road to the championship. The greatest comeback story ever. <laughs> Bring it out. Uh, you it literally got to look at it like that. There's no other nation on this planet has been through what we've been through. And there's no other nation promised to us, promised to them, what's promised to the Israelites to rule over all those who oppressed us. This is the this, this training ground. So you're gonna have to take some licks. You're gonna have to get punched in the stomach, punched in the neck. Bruh, in the neck? <laughs> <laughs> At all the places you choose the neck? <laughs> all praises. You know, think, yeah, it's gonna hurt, it's gonna hurt. But you need it, because it's gonna build you up to be something that you really can't even see yourself being right now at this moment. Yeah, that's true. All praises. Uh, let's go back to Deuteronomy 1. Read, um, pick up at verse 21. All right, so keep in mind, um, the Most High God through the, uh, through the Spirit told Moses to get up from Horeb and go to Canaan, right? So let's pick up in verse 21. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 21. Behold, the Lord thy God had set the land before thee. Go up and possess it, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath said unto thee, Fear not. Neither be discouraged. All right. So let me see who's thinking. When God said that through Moses, what is that? A commandment. a commandment. It is a commandment. I'm glad you understand that. That was a literal, straightforward commandment, right? Let's see if we listened. Read on. Verse 22. And ye came near unto me, every one of you, and said, We will send men before us, and they shall search us out of the land, and bring us word again by what way we must go up. And into what cities we shall come. Come on. And the saying pleased me well. And I took 12 men of you, one of a tribe. Read. And they turned and went up to the, well, and went up into the mountain and came unto the valley of Ishkol and searched it out. And they took of the fruit of the land in their hands and brought it down unto us and brought us word again and said, it is a good land which the Lord our God doth give us. Read. Notwithstanding, ye would not go up. But although they scouted out the land, they said, hey, this is a good, hey, Mosai looking out, bro. Hey, he, hey, that's Mosai God. Read verse 26. Notwithstanding, ye would not go up. They would what? Ye will not go up. They would not go up. They would not go. Read. But rebelled. Against the commandment of the Lord your God. Even when leadership gives you counsel that's good for you. Now check me out. Check it out. Even when they say, bruh, probably want to wait on that sister. She's not ready yet. But I'm burning. I want the draws. Say, bruh, no, not right now. Pray and fast, brother. Calm down. It's not ready yet. I want, no, I want to do it. They go do it anyway. Okay. And then, you know what they do on top of that? They start speaking evil against leadership. Leadership trying to run my life, man. Yeah, they trying to hold me back, man. I'm just trying to get a wife. They trying to hold me back. But a year later, all of a sudden, she's trying to leave me. Well, um, uh, well, hold on. Did, not, did I even approve that? Did I approve that? Officer, I don't know what to do. She's trying to leave me. It's like, okay. Okay, brother. Well, good for you. Uh, I wish you the best of luck at that. Carry on. You understand? Now let's continue. Verse 26. Verse 26. Come on. Notwithstanding, ye would not go up, but rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God. That's our people. Read. 
And he murmured in your tent. Not only did they have rebelled, they said, hey, hey, Moses, hey, that, that nigga ashy, man. You feel what I'm saying? I don't really like the way he talk anyway. You feel what I'm saying? But, I mean, who, who he think he is? You understand? We could take him, right? That's what they do. They go against the commandment and they start murmuring, start talking noise against those who have been chosen by God. Not, not to them of in their not. tents at the crib. Yeah, but what's done in secret always comes to light. Always. Always remember, guess what? If God chose Moses, you didn't think God let him know what was going on? And we try to tell them all the time. This is spiritual. This is spiritual. We are not normal men, as you may think of in the Christian church or out on the streets. We got spiritual powers. They don't believe me, though. That's the thing about it. They don't believe it. The Most High God gives his prophets spiritual power. Guess what? Yes. The, the prophets know stuff. The prophets know stuff. That's what you got to understand. It ain't against us. It's against God. It right. wasn't against Moses. Clearly, it was a direct attack against God. Right. Title of class. The congregation of Israel from Moses until now. My, we've come a mighty long way. Not much. Not even a step. Not even a step. Read what you got. Read it again. Verse 27. And ye murmured in your tents and said, Because the Lord hateth us, he had brought us forth out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Read. Whether shall we go up? Our brethren had discouraged our heart. Uh-oh. So guess what? That one wicked person now became a cancer because by him speaking evil guess what now he believe it he believe it he believe it he believe it. he believe it. Do -do 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 -do. now everybody's affected i hope y'all see that through the spirit of what god is saying not me not moses but god read it again verse 28 come on whether shall we go up our brethren had discouraged our hearts our brethren have discouraged our heart by murmuring and speaking evil about the mission. Come on. Saying, the people is greater and taller than we. We can't do this, man. They're trying to go get us killed, man. Hey, don't listen to what leadership say, man. They don't know what they're talking about. Read. The cities are great and walled up to heaven. Come on. And moreover, we have seen the sons of the Anakims there. It just means the Anakims were very tall stature. They were great men. Of, um, of war. That's who these people are. Read. Then I said unto you, dread not, neither be afraid of them. Come on. The Lord your God, which goeth before you, he shall fight, excuse me, he shall fight for you according to all that he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. So Moses reminded him, he said, like, hold on, wait a minute. <laughs> Egypt was, y'all remember Egypt? Y'all all right? Y'all all right? Y'all don't remember Egypt? Check this out. Y'all don't remember that after 400 years, no, 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 after thousands of years of not knowing who we were, God clicked on that light bulb and now we remember? You understand the same thing? Hey, Egypt, brothers, God allowed us to remember who we were. Y'all don't think that's a magnificent act? Y'all don't think that's an incredible testimony? You kidding me? Hold on. We've been lied to for thousands of years. We've been told that we're one thing, and not one of us knew who we were. But one day, God just started waking us up. Y'all don't think that's abnormal? But they come in the doors and go against the commandment of God all over again. You forget. Hopefully, this class will remind you. Give me Psalms 12 and 1 real quick. Psalms chapter 12 and verse 1. The book of Psalms, chapter 12, verse 1. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth. Ceaseth. Excuse me. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth. Oh, Lord. We're going to just go past that. Come on. <laughs> for the faithful fail from among the children of men. So Mo, um, so David is saying, where are the righteous people at? There's, like, there's no more righteous out there. Read. They speak vanity, every one with his neighbor. They speak things that are no profit. They gossip. They murmur. 
They tell bear behind your back. Read. With flattering lips. Oh, but in front of you, they got flattering lips. Like everything is okay. Exactly. Come on. With flattering lips and with a double heart. And with a what? A double heart. In front of you, we best of friends. Everything cool. But behind closed doors, nigga, I could do better than you. Read. With a double heart. Do they speak? Come on. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips. Hey, this is a warning. I didn't say it. Don't get mad at me. What does the Bible say? Verse 3. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips. Anybody know what that means? Anybody? My brother Zephaniah. Let's hear it. What does this mean? Uh, they say the Lord will cut off all flattering lips. I mean, the ones that murmur and complain are going to eventually be put to death. They're going to get put to death. That's exactly what it means. And that's why we're going through the history so you can see that he has done that. He's done it a lot. Okay. Read it again. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips. Read. And the tongue that speaketh proud things. Proud things. Proud things. Nah, I ain't, I ain't even going to go that route. I'm going I'm to spare, spare some of y'all. Pray y'all repent, though. I ain't going to go that route. I was, I was about to make people mad. Read on. Verse 4. Come on. Who have said with our tongue will we prevail? Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? Who they think they is? They can't tell me what to do. That brother or that sister is talking to you. It's talking to you. So if you're that brother or that sister saying, what? I don't have to listen to the elder sister. Who is she? Uh, the person who God set up. <laughs> That's who she is. You don't have to listen to the elder brother. Who is he? The, the one that God chose. But if you don't want to listen, verse 3 is for you. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things. But like I always say, brothers, I'm positive. I'm positive. Just repent. Repenting is great. It feels good. You ain't got to walk around feeling fake as hell. You feel what I'm saying? Who want to who wanna be real in here? Who want to be a real prophet? All the fake people, hey, just die. <laughs> you understand? But that's what the Bible says. Because it's going to happen. When you come through those doors, if you want to be an Israelite, there's something you got to do. It's one word, and it starts with a C. I'm giving it to you. What is it? What is it? Change. You have to change. Because if you don't change, you're still just a nigga on the streets. But now you got, like, fringes and a Bible, too. Now you're a nigga with Bible and fringes. That's what you are. You haven't changed to an Israelite, just a nigga with Bible and fringes. All right, from there, Psalms 31 and 18. The book of Psalms, chapter 31, verse 18. Come on. Let the lying lips be put to silence, which speak grievous things proudly and are contemptuously against the righteous. They will be put to silence one day. Just like leadership was going over in Sirach, the first chapter, sometimes it's going to be an extreme event that has to occur for you to rise up in the congregation and to fall before everybody when you could have easily just fixed it before it had to get that serious. Read that verse again. Verse 18. Let the lying lips be put to silence. Come on. Which speak grievous things proudly. And contemptuously against the righteous. From there, let's go to the book of Joshua 14. Now, we've been dealing with a lot of rebellious Israel. Let's go to some righteous Israel. Okay? Let's go to Joshua chapter 14 and verse 10. Joshua. Now, now remember the commandment. God told us to do what? What did God tell us to do? But we uh, backed out. Right, to go over to the land, right? All right, let's read this. Joshua 14 verse 10. Joshua chapter 14 verse 10. Come on. And... And now, behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years, even, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. Anybody know why they wandered in the wilderness? Uh, let me hear Simon. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, they, uh, the, the, most, the most I call... Uh, uh, Israel uh, wandered in the wilderness because of their uh, rebellion. And, and, and during that time span, what happened to them? What happened to that generation? Uh, they, were, uh, they, were, uh, they were 
uh, he, he destroyed them. They all died. They all died, okay? Now, read the verse again. Joshua chapter 14, verse 10. Come on. And now, behold, the Lord hath kept me alive. As he said, these 40 and 5 years, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. All right. So how old is Joshua right here? 85. 80, uh, a score is 20 years. So four score and then five. So that's 85. Read. As yet, I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. So even in his youth, he feels the same way because the spirit was dealing with him. Read. As my strength was then. Even so is my strength now Come on. for war, both to go out and to come in. So he was still able to go to war at 85 years old. Showing you what? He was a chosen vessel of the Most High God. The Spirit was rolling with him. Read. Now, therefore, give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake in that day. For thou heardest in that day how the Anakims were there. Where do we read about this at? Deuteronomy. The first chapter. Read on. And that the cities were great and fenced. If so be, the Lord will be with me. Then I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. As the Lord said. So it took all the way to his time when he became ruler for Israel to actually follow the commandment. Y'all don't see a problem with that? That's a problem. That's a, and that's been, our, that's been our saga from day one. We don't want to just listen to God. We have to get beat down, dragged, and sometimes some of us have to die. Some of us have to die, but all we have to do is just listen to what God says. Listen to what God is telling us to do, and our ways will be, be you'll be well off. All right? From there, let's go to Joshua, the 11th chapter. You know what? We, that's fine. I don't, I don't, got, I don't got to go any deeper into that. Now let's go to Hebrews 3. We're going to start at verse 5. The book of Hebrews chapter 3 verse 5. Come on. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house. So it says uh, the prophet Moses was faithful in all his house. Come on. As a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. And I want y'all to understand something. A servant. What is uh, what's another uh, name for a servant? Another word for a servant is a minister. All right? So he was their leader. Sim similar to how you see the leaders today. Understand, like this school. This school did not just get here like one day. Hey, y'all want to just walk somewhere and stumble upon IUIC Tallahassee? No. Brothers actually had to labor to get it. You understand? There's a lot of things behind the scenes that go on throughout this whole body that a lot of people have no clue. Because there are ministers, servants, working day in and day, and day out, making sure that everybody in here is straight. And that's what Moses was doing. And guess what? They didn't appreciate any of it. They didn't appreciate any of his labor, although he was a minister unto the people. He helped them out with biblical questions. He paved the way for the children of Israel. But he had nothing in return. But that's all right. He has his re reward in heaven. That's fine. I want you to read this. Hebrews 3 and 5. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 5. Come on. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. Spoken after. Do y'all remember in Matthew the 17th chapter when it was Elijah, Christ, and Moses? Y'all remember that? Right. So Moses, then Elijah, then Christ, their examples were doing nothing but what? Paving the way for the Messiah. You understand? The same attributes that Moses had, that Elijah had, Christ had, and more. He showed us the perfect way. But because you have to remember what happened with Moses, he got angry, and he did what? But what did he do? Who knows the history? He, yes. Shalom leadership. He Shalom. smoked the rock again after God told him to speak to it. Exactly. He smoked the rock out of anger. All right. Then you had Elijah and then you had Jesus Christ who did it what? Perfectly. 
Christ, was he a minister unto the people? Right. So that's why Moses said in Deuteronomy 18 and 18, hear ye him. Although I'm getting you ready through the law of Moses, you understand? I'm getting you prepared. But once he comes, hey, all of that, that's what that was symbolized in Matthew, the 17th chapter. All, all of that was now handed to Jesus Christ. Okay? That's what this is saying right here, too. Read verse 5 and 6 together. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 5. Come on. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. Those things that were spoken after was who? Jesus the Christ. Come on. But Christ as a son over his own house. Read. Whose house are we? We are the house of, of uh, Christ. Read. If we hold fast. If we what? If we hold fast. Only. We're, all, we're the congregation. We're part of his house. Only if we what? If we hold fast. The confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. What is the confidence of and rejoicing of the hope? What is that? What is the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope? Think about it. Samuel, take a shot. The confidence is going into keeping the commandments and the hope is going into uh, the kingdom that we will get once we uh, keep the commandments to the end. Right, that's correct. That's correct. It says we are only considered part of his house or his congregation if we do those things. I went over this thinking, which was y'all. A lot of times in this truth, brothers and sisters, we all come through those doors. Why? We know we're Israelite. We always wanted to do what's right to please God. But sometimes you're sitting here, maybe a year goes past, and you forget why you came through those doors. Now it's about, no, nah, that's my friend. I'm not worried about what leadership's saying. Or it's all about me. Look at how I break down this scripture. Or it's about, look at me, look at my new head wrap. I got these new, I got these new shoes. It can be whatever. But understand this, brothers and sisters, listen up. If you forget your first confidence, you ain't making it in. That's the thing about it. It says, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm, Firm means what? Diligent, circumspect, not shaky, not double-tongued. Firm unto the end, yeah, then you're going to be all right. You understand? Don't get it twisted. We fall. We make our mistakes. But you can't forget why you are here. You're not, you're not here for him. Why are you here? To get the kingdom, and it's nothing else. So if he falls out, that ain't got nothing to do with you. That has nothing to do with him because he knows why he's here. Read on. Verse 7. Come on. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, today, if ye will hear his voice, come on. Harden not your heart. Do what? Harden not your heart. That's Israel. Israel likes to keep things in, they like to hold grudges, they like to have hatred towards their brother, towards their sister. Come on. Harden not your hearts as in the provocation. In provocation. The, ooh, thank you. Harden not your hearts as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. So he's saying, do y'all remember how our forefathers hardened their hearts in the wilderness when they was with Moses? He's saying, don't do that. So why did we read some of the history? We're going back to, but why do we read some of that history? To show the type of spirit that our forefathers was in and to show you what? Those same spirits are present here, present day. But Christ is commanding us not to do what our forefathers did. Read on. Verse 9. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works 40 years. Come on. Where you, and notice, that's not Christ speaking. That's God speaking right there. So showing you what? Who did he use to do it? He used Moses to do it, but ultimately who was doing it? God was doing it. Read. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation. Come on. And said, they do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. They show up every Sabbath, 
but they don't they don't really believe some of y'all are dragged here by your spouses some of y'all just keep coming because of pride i'm gonna prove these niggas wrong i'm gonna just keep showing up y'all be like yeah right oh you you you, you just don't know the half of it all right read that verse again Verse 10, wherefore I was grieved with that generation and, and said, they do always err in their heart and they have not known my ways. Read. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. They shall what? They shall not enter into my rest. Come on. Take heed. Do what? Take heed. Brothers and sisters, take heed. Pay attention. Read. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. Of what? Of unbelief. What's belief according to the Bible? What does it mean to believe? Young man. Sirach chapter 32, verse 24. Let's read it again for some new people. What does it mean to believe? Write this next to that. So if you think you're unbelieving, just you can look at it and start believing again. Sirach 32, verse 24. The book of Sirach, chapter 32, verse 24. Come on. He that believeth in the Lord taketh heed to the commandment. In all situations. In all situations. If you truly believe. Let's go back to Hebrews. Hebrews, chapter 3, verse 12. Come on. Take heed, brethren. Lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. Come on. In departing from the living God. In departing from the living God. Brothers and sisters, you can be in the midst of the congregation, but your heart has departed from God. It is possible. Sisters, if you don't listen to your husbands. Brothers, if you don't take care of your wives, you have departed from the living God. Understand that. You could keep coming, but you're in the midst of fornication. You could keep coming. But you know behind closed doors, you turn it up at the club. You understand? You can be here in the congregation of Israel. Everybody know you, but your heart ain't with God. Read. Verse 13. But exhort one another daily. Do what? Exhort one another daily. That's why you got to be in a congregation. <laughs> That's why you have to be in a congregation. Because if you're not, you will fall. It's not if. Or it's not about when. It's you will fall. Because guess what? You'll start thinking that your knowledge is the right way. And that's when you err. The scripture says, lean not to thine own understanding. Read on. But exhort one another daily while it is called today. Come on. Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. And guess what? Sin, sin is not right there in your face. It says deceitfulness of sin. Meaning what? There's going to be something that you really like, and you're going to believe it. And, that, and that's going to be the ruin, ruin of you. Some men like power. So they be like, nah, I, I can do this by myself. Some men like women. So they want to have their own congregation with a bunch of women. You understand? Some people like all different various types of things. It don't matter. But understand, it's going to deceive you to believe that it's good. That's the most important thing you got to understand. Guess what? This brother may be struggling, but Officer Judah may have to tell him, bro, bro, look at the scripture. Bro, I didn't, even, I didn't even see it. I didn't even see it. That's what the brother brought out, iron sharpeneth iron. You need your brothers and sisters to uplift you, to correct you, because you will slip. Ain't nobody in here Christ. Nobody in here is Christ. So we, you will slip. But you need that helping hand. You need to be exhorted daily like the Bible says. Read on. 14. For we are made partakers of Christ. Read. If we hold. You're, the, you're, you're rushing. Read it correctly, please. Verse 14. For we are made partakers of Christ. Come on. If we. If. If. That's the key. If. It says we are made partakers with Christ. If. Read on. If. We hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Says it again. The beginning of our confidence should be what? Our love for the Most High in Christ. That should be the beginning of our confidence. 
So it says you'll be partakers only if, only if you keep the commandments to the end. That's what the Bible says. I want you to finish that out, and we're almost done. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 14. Come on. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Breathe. While it is said, today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provo oh. provocation. As in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. So some, when they heard the correction from the leader that God set up, they provoked God. So some did that. That's what it's reminding us, Read. How be it, not all that come out of Egypt by Moses. Read. But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? Whose what? Whose carcasses fell in the wilderness. Come on. And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest. So stop. It's showing you what? It's showing you that those carcasses at one point had life in their bodies. And they at one point walked with Moses for years. For years. So you're going to have spirits amongst us that walk with us. But their end... You understand? But the end is going to be destruction. But brothers and sisters, the reason why we go through these classes, that doesn't have to be you unless you want it to be you. You understand? That don't got to be you. But I ain't going to lie. Everybody in this room is not going to make it. That's just, that's just the truth. Everybody in this room will not make it. But it's, it is up to you. You have a chance. All you have to do is keep the beginning of your confidence steadfast until the end. That's what the Bible says. Read on. Verse 18. And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not. That what? But to them that believe not. When you see all this craziness going on in Israel, they never really believed. That's the thing. Don't get like, oh, man, he's an officer. He fell out. So what? Who is he? We are nobody, man. I ain't nobody. You understand? All we are is vessels of the Most High God. All we are is walking in the will of God. That's all we doing. Profit, unprofitable servant. This is our reasonable service to the Most High in Christ. Understand that, first and foremost. So, just in case you got the line blurred of how you should respect the leadership, we're going to go over that too. All right, read what you got. Verse 19, so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. So the same thing. They didn't get into uh, Israel, the promised land, because of unbelief. Brothers and sisters, if you're rolling in the same spirit, this time you're not going to get into what really counts. That's the kingdom of heaven, New Jerusalem, all over again, second time. All right, from there. Give me um, Deuteronomy. No, drop Deuteronomy. Give me Deuteronomy 10, 12. Deuteronomy 10, 12. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10, verse 12. Come on. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? Um, if something was required, what does that mean? Mandatory. It's mandatory, right? So it's mandatory that God has this from each and every last one of us. Read. But to fear the Lord thy God. Come on. To walk in all his ways. And how many? In all his ways. Even if you don't like it. In all his ways. Come on. And to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Read. To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes which I command thee this day for thy good. For thy what? For thy good. From there. Let's go to Sirach chapter 7 and verse 30. Sirach Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 7 and verse 30. The book of Sirach, chapter 7, verse 30. Come on. Love him that made thee with all thy strength and forsake not his ministers. Why? Read it again. Love him that made thee with all thy strength and forsake not his ministers. Why? Uh, Brother Shemuel. Um, 
um, because if you mistake, if you forsake his ministry, you forsaken the Most High. That's simple. Now read verse twenty nine. Verse twenty nine. Fear the Lord with all thy soul and reverence his priests. What does it mean to reverence his priests, brother Shemuel? To honor and respect um, leadership. Right. So just in case you, you got uh, um, confused, it means you still have to show honor and respect because God chose those men. Now, from there, let's go to the book of Jeremiah 15. Now, this is a heavy point right here. This is a heavy point. I'm going to do some summary so we can finish. So it came to a point where the Most High God in the book of Numbers 16, where the Most High God was going to put a whole multitude of people to death. But Moses and Aaron, they started offering up sacrifice, an atonement for them so God wouldn't kill them. All right, so God spared some of them. He killed most of them, but spared some because of the atonement that uh, Moses and Aaron offered up. Now, I want you to read this scripture because sometimes it gets so bad where the leaders can't do anything for you. Sometimes the Most High God, he's just going to step in and intervene. Give me that in Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 1. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 15, verse 1. Come on. Then said the Lord unto me, through Moses and Samuel. Th read it read it correctly. Oh, no. Then said the Lord unto me, though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind could not be toward this people. Although we had great leaders such as Moses and Samuel, honest men, servants of the Most High God, God said, hey, these people are so wicked, I don't even care no more. That's what he's saying right there. Read on. Cast them out of my sight. Do what? Cast them out of my sight. Read verse 7. Verse 7. Come on. And I will fan them with a fan in the gates of the land. I will bereave them of children. I will destroy my people. God said what? I will destroy my people. Why? Since they return not from their ways. So brothers and sisters, all we can do is give you warning from God. That's all we can do. But if time after time and time after again, you don't want to take the warning, God's going to say, move to the side. Now, I'm going to bring forth judgment. Y'all got to understand that thing, brothers and sisters. But... As leaders of the flock, we're going to do the same thing as our forefathers. 2 Ezra 7.36. 2 Ezra chapter 7, verse 36. The book of 2 Ezra chapter 7, verse 36. Come on. Then said I, Abraham prayed first for the Sodomites. So Abraham prayed for the Sodomites because that took place in what time? During his day. Sodom and Gomorrah, during this time, he prayed for the wicked of his generation. Read. Abraham prayed first for the Sodomites and Moses for the fathers that sinned in the wilderness. So, brothers and sisters, understand that's what we do. We pray for the people. We pray for the congregation of Israel. Although they spoke all manner of evil against Moses, he still prayed for the people because he knew they didn't know what they were doing. He knew. He understood everything. But he still prayed for the people, although they spoke evil of him. From there, let's go. We're not going to go to number 16 because that's too much. But I will go to Psalms uh, chapter 106. Psalms 106 and 23. It's going to give us a little history, a little summary of the history. Psalms 106, 23. The book of Psalms, chapter 106, verse 23. Come on. Therefore, he said that he would destroy them. Had not Moses, his chosen, stood before him, the breach? In the breach. So you just see that, right? He just said he was going to destroy them. But Moses, he intervened. He said, hey, I'm going to offer up an atonement for their sins. So he stopped it. You understand that, right? God was going to kill the nation of Israel or the uh, congregation of Israel multiple times. But you have to understand, Moses intervened. Do you understand that? So a lot of times, stone is out there. Y'all don't understand what we do as leaders for the people. We take the burdens of the people and put it upon ourselves. Not because we were asked to do it. It's because we were chosen to do it. That's what the Bible says. 
whether you want to believe it or not. But I ain't worried. To the peer, all things appear. I already know that. So whoever is, uh, what does it say in 1 Corinthians 11? Oh, whoever's approved among you, they're going to receive the word. But those who are just here taking up space, we're not worried about, we're not worried about those souls. We only worried about the elect. All right, read what you got. Read on. Therefore, he said that he would destroy them. Had not Moses, his chosen, stood before him in the breach Read. to turn away his wrath, lest he should destroy them. Come on. Yea, they despised the pleasant land. They still despised it. They still despised it. After all the sacrifice, they still had something to say. Read. They believed not his word. They what? They believed not his word. Read. But murmured in their tents. Come on. And hearkened not unto the voice of the Lord. Read. Therefore he lifted up his hand against them to overthrow them in the wilderness. Read. To overthrow their seed also among the nations. Also among the nations. And to scatter them in the land. Come on. They joined themselves unto Baal Peor. Come on. Unto Baal Peor and ate the sacrifices of the dead. So they started sacrificing their own children and eating them. All right. They turned it to all manner of witchcraft, wickedness, idolatry. The same way the majority of us was in the Christian church celebrating Christmas, Thanksgiving, Valentine's Day. Read. Thus they provoked him to anger with their inventions. Come on. And the plague break in upon them. Read. Then stood up, the, then stood up Phineas. And executed judgment. And so the plague was stayed. And so the plague was stayed. You can read about that valiant act in Numbers the 25th chapter. About Phineas. Let's read it real quick. It's, it's short. 25 and 1. Numbers chapter 25 and verse 1. Numbers chapter 25 verse 1. Come on. And Israel abode in Shittim. And, in the, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their God. Stop. So you see that interracial marriage is called whoredom. You're in the midst of whoremongering if you deal with somebody outside of the nation of Israel. Read. And the people did eat and bow down to their gods. Come on. And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. Read. And the Lord said unto Moses, take all the heads of the people and hang them on and hang them up before the Lord against the sun. Wait, wait, wait. I don't think y'all understand what God just told Moses to do. What did God just tell Moses to do? Read it. Verse 4. Come on. And the Lord said unto Moses, take all the heads of the people. Take everybody's head while they're living. Take all the heads of the people. Read. And hang them up before the Lord. Chop their heads off and go hang them up. Read. Against the son read that the fierce anger of the lord may be turned away from israel read and moses said unto the judges of israel come on slay ye every one his men do, do, do what slay ye every one his men so he said to the leadership to all the judges he said hey all those men that's under you kill them all that's what god just said he said go kill all of them read Slay ye every one his men Come on. that were joined unto Baal Peor. Read. And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Midianitish woman. So, so this guy, this guy right here. So he sees that Israel is about to get judged for other uh, women of other nations. But this guy strolls in with a Midianitish woman like everything is cool. Like everything is, what's wrong with this brother? What's wrong with him? Come on. In the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel. Read. Who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Come on. And when Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw it, he rose up from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand. Who knows what a javelin is? Uh, what's, what's a javelin? Shimmy well. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's a spear. Yeah, it's like a spear, like a long spear, right? Read. And took a javelin in his hand, and he went after the man of Israel into the tent. So he chased him. 
He said, nigga, do you see what's happening over here? God's trying to kill us all. And your wicked behind is bringing in a Midianitish woman. You know what? I had enough of it. I got to put you to death myself. Read. And thrust both of them through the man of Israel and a woman. Read, read that again. And, read. and thrust both of them. When it says both of them, that's talking about him and the Midianite. Read. Through the man of Israel and a woman through her belly. So our lives got spared. But sometimes, check this out. A lot of you will know somebody is, is wrong, but you will side with them anyway. A lot of you don't have the spirit of our forefather Phineas. A lot of you have the spirit of Kor and his men who want to continue to go against leadership. Although God just said, hey, Moses, go get the heads of all these people. And they say, uh... Well, that's my brother. He walked in with a Midianitish woman. That's okay. He's my brother. He's not doing it, you know, to go against you. Then, then, what is he, then what is he doing? That's what will happen. Brothers and sisters, do not make excuse for sin. Do not make excuse for sin. You got to be valiant like our forefather Phineas, like Mattathias. When he saw his nation sinning against God, he stood up for it and spoke against it. Not speak against righteousness. Those who speak against righteousness will be judged for that. This class is to warn each and every last one of us, to remind us why we're here, to hold fast to our first confidence. All right? From there, Ezekiel 11 and 16. We got three more scriptures. Wait, yet. Yeah. Four. Ezekiel 11 and 16. Congregation of Israel from Moses until now. Read that. Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 16. Come on. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, although I have cast them far off among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. So wherever we're scattered at, for example, uh, the people in this room live in the, around the Tallahassee area in the two-hour radius. So this is our little sanctuary in the country that we were scattered in. All right, Titus 1 and 5. Let's see if the same thing happened. Let's see if the orders that Moses set up happened in the time of Paul and happened today. Let's find out. Titus chapter 1 and verse 5. The book of Titus chapter 1 verse 5. Come on. For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city. Do what? Ordain elders in every city. So once again, you see that same spirit of righteousness manifesting itself during the time of the apostles and the continuation of the apostles present day. All right? From there, 1 Corinthians 11 and 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 19. Come on. For there must also, excuse me, for there must be also heresies among you. Who knows what a heresy is? If somebody's speaking heresy, um, Zeph. Lies. Lies, right. Uh, new doctrine, something against our first faith or our first confidence. Now it says that there must be heresies among you. Meaning what? The same stuff that Moses dealt with. As leaders, we're going to deal with the same thing. The same things in the congregation that they dealt with. The congregation today is going to deal with the same thing. As we read in Joshua 14, guess what? Joshua made it. Joshua made it to the promised land. Guess what? Y'all got a chance to make it too. Everybody does not have to be destroyed. You do have a choice. But let's read the scripture. For there must be also heresies among you. There's going to be murmuring. There's going to be lies, deceit, flatteries. Read. That they which are approved. But those who are approved like Joshua was. Read. May be made manifest among you. Because when God tells them to do something, it don't matter what nobody else say. He's still going to do it. That's what you got to understand. Joshua said to hell with all you wicked Negroes. I'm still going to do the commandment that God commanded my forefather Moses. Even if I'm 85 years old. From there. 2 Timothy 3.1. You know what? Drop that. Give me 1 Timothy 1 and 18. 
All right, let's read it. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 18. Come on. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. So we got to fight a good fight. We got to keep the uh, beginning of our confidence to the end. Read. Holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. Meaning what, brothers and sisters? There's going to be some brothers and sisters that you know that are going to depart from the faith. It's going to happen multiple times, and it's not going to stop. Read. Of whom is Hymenius and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, Come on. that they may learn not to blaspheme. What did they do? 2 Timothy 2. 2 Timothy 2 and 10. Remember, there must be heresies among you, right? There's a heresy out there saying that the Sabbath is, is from sunrise to sunrise. That, brothers and sisters, that's called a heresy. There's a heresy in Israel right now saying that the Sabbath is from sunrise to sunrise. But guess what? Those people were once amongst this congregation. They were once a part of IUIC. But. We're showing you in the scriptures that this is nothing new. This heresies have happened. Blaspheming has happened all throughout the scriptures. Read this. This is the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 10. Watch this. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 10. Come on. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sakes. Come on. That they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus. With eternal glory. Like I said earlier, only reason we're doing what we're doing because we know some of you are approved. We know everybody's not, but we're doing it for those who will be approved. Come on. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we can get over our sins here, we shall also rest with him in paradise. Come on. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he shall also will deny us. Read. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. Come on. Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit. It says that they strive not about words to no profit. As we read down, it's going to tell us why. Read. But to the, but to the subverting of hearers. Read. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. The Bible tells us to study precept among precept, rightly dividing the word of truth. Verse 16. But shun profane and vain babbling. It says what? But shun profane and vain babbling. Has anybody ever seen the precept that says from sunrise to sunrise? You're not going to see it. But all throughout the scriptures, you're going to see sundown to sundown. Read verse 16 again. But shun profane and vain babbling. Nigga, what are you talking about? Be quiet. Be quiet with that. Read. For they will increase unto more ungodliness. They will do what? They will increase unto more ungodliness. More ungodliness to this brother. Now he's poisoned with it. Now, just like in the old covenant, when they were fearful to go into the land, one person said it. But then what happened? This brother got it. This brother got fearful. This brother got, to the most I had to kill them all. The name of today's title, the congregation of Israel from Moses until now. We are our forefathers. That's what you got to see, brothers. In the spirit, in the scripture, you got to realize we are our forefathers. We live in the same thing, just at a different time. Read. Verse 17. And their word would eat as a doth. A okay, I'll read it. Yeah, okay. It says, and their word will eat as doth a canker. Who knows what a canker is? Yes, sir. It's a, it's a, it's a sore. Right. All right. So let's go back to the scriptures. Read where you left off. And their word will eat as doth a canker. So, these spirits that continue to sit amongst us, their words will do what? Destroy others. Read. Of whom is Hymenius and Philetus? Philetus. Oh, and Phileus, 
who concerning the truth have erred. Say, now it's going to say how they erred. Because remember in 1 Timothy, it says that they did what? They blasphemed. So now we're going to see what heresy they were guilty of. Read. Saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. So now they're saying that Christ, he already came. He's not coming back. So guess what? Were they the only ones who believed that doctrine? No. Once they start preaching that doctrine, guess what? Others start believing it too. So that became what? A canker. Showing you what, brothers? More of the story. Romans 16 and 18. Romans chapter 16, verse 18. Come on. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. So, those who cause division, those who want to speak against the leadership or the mission, or have hatred toward their brothers and sisters. Read it again. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. Read. And by good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple that's why it's more than important that we study like both officers said a lot of these questions y'all should know a lot of these questions y'all should know and if you don't know don't be if you've been with us over a year yeah be shamed but if you haven't been with us here it's okay there's a learning curve that's why you are assigned a soldier and an officer because when i do this q a a majority of these questions y'all should know like clockwork but guess what when these situations arise when you hear these heresies, y'all are the type of people that get affected. So that's why this class was brought out. The congregation of Israel. This, man, what you've seen in Israel, this, is, this has been happening for years, even during the time of Moses. But Lord's will, y'all, govern yourselves accordingly. Start studying more. Take it more serious. You understand? If you weren't, just go harder. of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.